Lesson 12.2b, Identifying Independent and Dependent Quantities from a Graph. In video 12.2a, the previous video, we saw how we can represent a relationship between an independent variable as a number of shirts bought and a dependent variable as the total amount spent in dollars. We can also use a graph to show this relationship. Sam bought some shirts that cost $20 each. How much did he spend? Well, the amount spent depends on the number of shirts he bought. Here's the amount he spent, and here would be the number of shirts he bought. If he buys zero shirts, he spends zero dollars. If he buys one shirt, he spends twenty dollars. If he buys two shirts, he spends forty. If he buys three shirts, he spends sixty, and so on. The graph shows the relationship between the two variables x and y. If Sam buys five shirts, he's going to spend one hundred dollars. We have a table of x and y values. The x is the independent value and the y is the dependent value. When he purchases zero, well, he spends zero. If he gets one shirt, it's $20, two shirts, it's $40, and so on. The value of y is 20 times the value of x. We have an equation in two variables. y is equal to 20x. And we, you notice this is only one quadrant. This is the first quadrant. It's quadrant one up here in the corner. And we only need quadrant one for this graph because the quantities for x and y are positive numbers. Negative values wouldn't make sense in this situation. So this situation involves two different units, amount spent and number of shirts. This relationship is multiplicative because the y value changes by a multiple of 20 as the x value increases by 1. Tala has 10 cans of dog food but wants to buy more. The amount of dog food that she buys and the amount she will have are shown on the graph. If she buys 10 more, she'll have 20. She started with 10, so if she purchases 10 more, she will then have 20. And if she purchases another 10, well, then she'll have 30. The amount of cans she will have is dependent on the amount of cans she purchases. The dependent variable is y. The independent variable is x. We have y is equal to 10 plus x. That's the dog food cans in all is equal to the dog food cans she had to start. She started with 10 plus the dog food cans she buys. And because Tala already had 10 cans, the value of y will always be 10 greater than the value of x. This situation involves the same units for x and y as cans of dog food. And the relationship between x and y is additive because for every 10 cans she buys, she has 10 cans more than before. So the equation we use, y is equal to 10 plus x, is an addition equation in two variables. We have our x values and our y values. And if she doesn't buy any cans, well, she already had 10 cans to start, so she'll have 10. If she buys 10, well, now she's going to have 20. y is equal to this 10 she started with plus the amount she purchases. Y is the dependent variable, and X is the independent variable. Now be careful, because Y won't be the dependent variable every single time in every single problem. It just usually is the dependent, and X is usually the independent variable. Okay, we finished the second part of this lesson. We're going to go on to the last part of this lesson, describing relationships between independent and dependent variables. Have a really great day, and join me for the next part of this lesson. Bye.